Let's go. Go to bed. Do you always buy new cars for your tanks? Do you always buy new cars for your tanks? <laughs> Do you lease those cars? <laughs> Folks, we will call to order the regular September 14th meeting of the Adrian City Planning Commission. Mr. Clement, would you call the roll, please? Yep. Jacobitz? Here. Love? Here. Weatherby? Present. Johnson? Here. Watson? Yep. Taylor? Here. Cotton? Gauss? Present. All members except for Commissioner Cotton are present. Thank you. Um, first item on our agenda is consideration of our minutes from the August 3rd meeting. Commissioners, I presume you've had an opportunity to review those minutes. Sure. Are there any additions or corrections to the August 3rd minutes? Mr. Taylor. I have one, Mr. Chairman, on page five. Um, I don't know whether Vice Chairman Watson got a new name or I did, but it says that Vice Chairman Watson Taylor supported. I don't believe we're married now, but anyway. You're not my type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Motion by Vice Chairman Watson, Taylor. No, Taylor. motion was by uh, Commissioner Cotton. Oh, okay. I'm okay. not sure if Commissioner Watson or I. Okay. Seconded, but anyway. Okay. Or maybe so, no, it did. Maybe it was a tie. Are there any other additions or corrections to the August minutes? Hearing none, we'd entertain a motion for their approval. Move to approve. Support. We have a motion from Commissioner Love with support from Commissioner Taylor. All those in favor of approving minutes, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Next item on our agenda is case number 21036. Um, it's a request for a daycare center at 1232 West Maumee Street. Um, normally, uh, when we have a hearing like this, I would ask the petitioner to tell us a little bit of what it is they propose to do. Um, I think maybe it would be uh, behoove us though to just have a little background on this uh, before we before we uh, ask her to to address us. Um, this is the former Lutheran Church on West Maumee Street that is near uh, the um, um, Knob Hill Apartments, just immediately east of Knob Hill Apartments. Um, I think probably tonight that mostly this is just going to be a discussion on the part of the Planning Commission. Uh, so we can either give some advice or direction to either staff and or the petitioner. Um, the property is zoned R1, which is permits churches. Uh, I think we've all dealt with things like this before. It often creates a problem for us that we traditionally churches were in neighborhoods and we permitted churches in residential neighborhoods. When it stops being a church, it becomes a problem though, because the property is zoned residential. Um, churches are permitted in, in R1 by zoning exception permit. Family daycares are permitted. A family daycare is defined as a daycare unit that's in a home, residential home that has fewer than six, six or fewer children. A group daycare is permitted in R1, and that's defined similarly to the family daycare, except it's usually between six and 12 children that participate there. The request here is for a child care center, um, which is a larger facility that is obviously larger than 12 uh, children. They are not currently permitted in any residential districts. They're permitted in the office service district and in the B1 business district um, by right, not even by zoning exception permit. So the thing I would like us to discuss, and maybe we want to hear from the petitioner before we get into our discussion, but is, is this an appropriate use for this property in this location? Um, if so, um, what do we do to try to accommodate it? Um, if not, uh, what do we foresee this property being used for in the future? Um, like I said, it's not an uncommon problem when a, when a church 
that is traditionally located in a neighborhood no longer is a church. Um, with that said, um, I believe that uh, Mrs. Dayharsh is with us uh, virtually. And if she would care to briefly tell us what it is that she is asking to be able to do with this property. Yes, hello. Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Um, so we plan on opening a child care center at this location where we would be licensed for 60 children at a given time. With those 60 children, we plan to employ at least 15 staff members. And we plan to operate um, uh, into a later shift. So our opening shift would be about 5.30 a.m. And then a later shift until 10 p.m. to accommodate the second shift uh, workers and a lot of the single family um, employees. So I've been in front of the board before. Um, I've operated a group home daycare out of my home on Alexander Drive. And I've been in the childcare industry um, for over 10 years now. And I just hope to bring something to Adrian where we can help support the working families that have odd shifts that they are working and, and find it very hard to find appropriate childcare. Thank you. Commissioners, any questions for Mrs. Deharsh? What are your proposed ages? So our youngest would be newborn, so six weeks. And then we do uh, plan to accommodate school age children, which would go up to the age of 10. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for the petitioner? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, as I suggested, this is probably more of a planning commission discussion item tonight. I don't foresee us taking action on this. Um, in any way, shape, or form, Does staff have a. Uh, I would well. I would just say before we realized the discrepancy here with the zoning, uh, there was a public hearing notice yeah. sent out, and so we would probably want to invite yes. uh, public comments as well. Do I imagine that's why you folks are here? Yes. If you'd like to address the planning commission on it, if you'd step forward to the podium uh, and identify yourself and where you live and tell us what you'd like to say. My name is Jovici Chanjelko. I'm living on 1259 Terrace Avenue, which is right on the corner with West Maumee Street. And I've been living, we've been living uh, on that, that address for the last 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, personally, I love kids and I, I, we got two of our own kids, a little older. Uh, and uh, in the past seven years, I've been working midnight shift so West Maumee Street is the busiest, busy street as, as is. And um, my main concern is uh, for opening daycare in that location because it's a little, basically across the street from my house, uh, level of the noise that then uh, amount of the time that kids will spend outside, especially during summertime, you know. Eh. Okay, thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, but oh. I'm, I'm working from since uh, from 10 p.m. until 6 a.m. in the morning. So at uh, the Gas Harrison Correction Facility. Oh. And uh, so it's a stressful job. <laughs> I need a little quiet. quiet time in the morning, you know, as as much as possible. That's that's uh, my main my main concern. You know, so. OK, thank you. Thank you. Where, where does help me out? Maybe you can help me out. Where, yeah. where does ten, where does Terrace intersect mommy at? Give me some reference. Right, right, right across the street. Across the street. Is it Just right across, across the street. The street. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No. Commissioners, we need to give both probably staff and the petitioner some direction here. I mean, one option would be we don't feel this is an appropriate use for this property at this location. Um, one approach would be to consider rezoning it to OS1. Um, or probably not to B1. That's a B1 is another district that would permit such a use. Um, another option would be 
a um, the rehab codicil, which I my own preference is that we don't use that for situations like this, but it's a possibility. Um, and it's, it's kind of, um, you know, it, it, it's a bit, bit of a dilemma because like I said, you have a, we have a church, a large, in effect, commercial building in a residential district. Um, but the proposed use in my mind is a lot more intensive than it was as a church. Um, with the fact that there's, it'll be an operation five to seven days a week and 12 to 14 hours a day. I see that, but I have, I'm kind of on the opposite of, I actually like this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, one, it repurposes this church that I don't see a whole lot of other uses, especially with what's around it because mm -hmm. it's all residential around it. So anything you try to say for another big building could be more of a spot zone situation, which we don't do. Um, and then I can tell you from personal experience, one, finding childcare in the city can be nearly impossible and has been even more nearly impossible um, since a few centers have closed to certain ages. Um, and also um, my children personally go to the Montessori Children's House. However, when they were displaced from their situation, it took them over eight months to find appropriate property for them to actually find a new location. Um, so on that regard, I think this kind of works out really well um, for this property and for their needs. It's a big open space. Well, it is a huge, and it huge. is a huge lot. Yeah, um, you got plenty of 10,000 square feet of fenced in area to play in proposed. So, well, it's also, and, and I'm not absolutely certain on this, but the lot adjacent, the lot to the east and to the north, mm -hmm. I think is part of the same ownership that that L shaped or that dog leg yeah. shaped property. Yeah. Uh, I think it's part of the church's property as well, even though it's all, a separate parcel. All of that, including yeah. some of the woods. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Is yes. um actually maybe more. we've got to look at this as if we're going to try to rezone it or make it optional in R one the other church buildings in town that could possibly turn into a date you know mm -hmm. it, you know could yeah. be an opportunity this was a you know this was a going concern not that yeah. long ago. well and this this particular piece has all that parking yeah you know there's several churches in this community locate you know there's one right there on greenley street it'd make a great daycare mm -hmm. there's no park yeah so there's one for sale over on toledo yeah yeah it has absolutely no park. no park yeah. mm -hmm. so i think we need if we were to go down that I, I i personally think it should be allowed in r1 with an exception permit saying it needs this kind of parking you know that because so much property so much property so much parking um is it allowed in r1 as a zoning exception yes that it meets these criteria it says there's off street parking for staff and for um buses whatever i think also you know he makes a good point it's on a busy street it, there needs to be setbacks like the kids need to be kept in the backyard mm -hmm. um it, or so far away from that busy street you know yeah. kids are squirrely they can get around the fence real quick if they're trying <laughs> another option besides just allowing them generally is allowing them as a reuse, right? And so if there's an existing building in the district that could be repurposed for that use, like in this situation. Just not, yeah. not allow new construction. Correct. Uh -huh. You know, and what's what's fairly unique about this site is that they, they need to change literally almost nothing, put up a fence. That's mm -hmm. the only thing they need to do to repurpose if, this site. If they called this a preschool and not a daycare, they, wouldn't they be able to use it if it were an elementary school an elementary like school yeah. yeah so that's the other thing yes this functions differently than a church does and the churches for the most part have activity on sunday and not so much during the week but also allowed in this district are schools right. from kindergarten on up mm -hmm. and those function very much like this yes. does in terms of traffic level yeah. and so on so was the just to clear so was like the methodist church when they were running the Eater in public preschool out of there was that in violation then, probably. 
it's zoned R1 as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, it was, it, its which, primary yeah. use was as a surge. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I mean, if we were to consider a rezoning to like OS1, I would suggest that we would consider it doing the Methodist church property at the same time, uh, which would reduce the argument of this being a spot too, because those are adjacent, large adjacent parcels. So the Methodist is currently zoned R1? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but, um, does, does that district allow uh, churches? Jim? Yes. On this one. Mm -hmm. Which, which is maybe something I digress, but maybe that's something we need to consider because that's how we've gotten in this issue. But what can go in OS one? So what, what if we did that? Lots of things go in OS one. Uh, uh, um, restaurants. Um, of course, you're right. Brian. Good like point. That is you're opening that, Pandora's that box. Other things we wouldn't want there. That's why I'm so, saying, like, I yeah. feel like this should stay R one, and we should make some rules that Good say. Point. Good you point. can make it a daycare up to certain levels if you have this much off street parking. You know, she says there's going to be buses. Well, that bus has got to make that turn in there. Some, I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. We, they, you know, we don't need them parking on the street, waking up this gentleman at five in the morning or six in the morning. You know, that, that's the kind of foundation for it sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm very, I think that's a great idea for this building. So when, when I looked at the use, um, R1 allows for, well, it references 2502, which is group daycares and all that kind of stuff. And there is criteria in there, um, which I think I put for the parking and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I could beef that up and we add into the R1 that that's a zoning exception if that's the way we want to go um, to where we have more restrictions. Um, but as it was right now, you know, it was asking for, you know, parking was pretty big on it. Um, so they needed 48 spaces, which they're at 58. So they actually have 10 more um, than they need. But I could beef it up to make sure that the, um, you know, the children are in the back, you know, X amount from the street, however we want to do it. There's, there's drive accommodations. If, if there's going to be buses, there needs to be some provision loading for and loading, unloading. unloading zones that are not in the right of way. <coughs> Commissioner Goss, any? No, I agree with uh, Commissioner Love. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they, uh, he talks about the uh, the absence of available space there, mm -hmm. and one of the things we try to say is to draw more young families into the city. If they don't have a place for their children to go. Then that kind of defeats the purpose. Um, yeah, I'm in favor of doing something, coming up with some kind of parameters to make this acceptable. Should we ask staff to draft uh, provisions in R1 for a zoning exception permit that would cover some of the things we discussed? We can do that. <laughs> I, I would ask, should I put should I change the language then in R1 to add this particular one into that and then beef up 2502 that it references? Yes. I, that, well, that would be I'm unclear with what you're saying. 2502 is the special standards for child care facilities. So within mm -hmm. R1, it right. says, you know, day, group daycare, daycare, um, subject to 25.02, which gotcha. is zoning exception, and then it gives you the list. So that's where I would probably add into 2502. Well, that's where I would yes. add the restrictions, at, but also add child care facility within R1. Mm -hmm. But then that wouldn't change the current for in homes, correct? Right. Correct. Right. Okay. This would be strictly for the daycare centers that we would beef that up. So we just add, I guess, more restrictions. So I would need, you know, I could bring a draft of it, or if you guys have ideas now, um, or however we want to do it. I can probably look around and see what other cities do. Um, I might be able to see if there's noise mitigation ways. What's the applicant's time proposed timeline? I'm currently working um, with the financing and we've already submitted an offer on the building. Um, so it's just a matter of 
them waiting for the approval. So I submitted an offer August 1st and it was accepted. Um, we were hoping to close around October. Oh, your, and your offer is contingent upon being able to use it as presented. Correct. Okay. On the other hand, I would suggest there's probably not a whole lot of activity on this property. Right now? No. I mean, in terms of right. pur purchasers. In a perfect adult. world, it wouldn't be till the first meeting of November that they have a change, correct? Because it oh, would be a zoning ordinance. So I can't, so today was the last day that I could notice the paper. Um, I may be able to get them to squeeze it in, but if we go to do this, I could, if we set the public hearing, mm -hmm. For then I may be able to get it, but I think the earliest we can get them in is November for well, any sort of change. Unless you set a special meeting. Unless you set a special meeting. Into what? Into us or into the? Because it's got to come to us first, right? So it's yeah, October. so we have to conduct a public hearing here, and so yeah. you know we. So it'd be our October meeting. With and I, if we with notice, I don't see how we can do it any whole lot. But that's what we're going to gain is a day or two. Well, we, I mean, the relevant no period of time is that we got to give notice to the public 15 days ahead of whenever exactly. you're going to conduct public oh, care. Sure. Yep. So if we talked about the language at your meeting in October, I got it. You, you could then well. set the public hearing for, you know, at your discretion whether you wanted it, uh, you know, 21 days out or the mm -hmm. November meeting. But I don't really see how we could, even if we had it written, which we don't. Right. Uh, we could have it noticed in the paper in time for the October meeting. Because mm -hmm. um, we're meeting late this month, you know, yeah. we don't have as much yeah. time as normally. Let, let's do this. Let's uh, ask staff to prepare uh, language for the uh, 2502, that section? 25, section 2502 that would permit uh, child care centers in our R1 by zoning exception permit. We'll, we'll also have to amend the uh, zoning exception uses in R1. Yes, yes. Um, and yes, no, it's, 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 yep. Two, two readings at city commission mm -hmm. as well. Uh, you made twice a month. Yep, yep. Uh, that, that may be true that we're worried a little bit about the, the time and I, I'm, I'm aware that, you know, when you're wanting to get moving forward with a project, but I, I am I am wanting to see the language that Jeremiah is going to yeah. going to draft this because this is a huge difference in the number of cars on on that part of the street. I mean, 60 children and 15 employees uh, during certain times of the day. I think that we need to have some language in here that that does address those those issues for for um, for the area. So I. I you know, I don't want to rush forward and and not be cognizant of, of the fact that we are changing um, this property by a great deal. Mr. Taylor? Well, so I'm following up on what uh, Commissioner Weathery said. So is a request for the parking uh, based on how many spaces are currently there? In other words, are they, are they not wanting to eliminate some spaces to meet our, our requirements? Uh, the way the calculations work, they were, uh, they had just like two spaces more than 120% of what they were required right. to have. So they, you know, they were, uh, I, they could have had more children. The, the parking is not limiting how many children they can have. I mean, I, I just wonder why they need that many spaces, even though there's 60 children and not all coming at the same time. So, right. No, I think they, you know, other than not wanting to engage in unnecessary expense, sure. you know, they could do with less parking. And then during the spot to pick up nine people off the street, like KFC is. Yeah, it, it, it maybe some of that parking needs need to be converted to on pick up drop off area. That's true. Good point. Yeah, oh, that's true. Yep. Off the street. Yes. Okay. Um, just for everyone's edification, um, we will take a look at a draft at our October 5th meeting the, for us to consider uh, changes to the ordinance that by special exception permit would permit such a use. Um, we will then have to set a public hearing to consider that. Uh, 
we, do we want to set a public hearing for the October 5th now? Well, like no, I we, say, we, we can't we, notice it. We can't it notice it in time, time anyway. So, so you'll okay. have a chance to review yeah. it and then we can set the public hearing. But it would yeah. be uh, appropriate to have a motion directing us to do the text amendment. Okay. We would entertain a motion to direct the staff to do the text amendment to the section relative to um, zoning exception permits for R1. So moved. Support. Okay. Love and Taylor. Is there any additional discussion? That would mean too then that uh, uh, the, you know, the very earliest that we could consider this in a public hearing would be sometime later in October. At, at a if we had a, if we were willing to have a special meeting for it, and that the city commission would then have to have it for two of their meetings, which would put it into mid November. So just FYI, folks. Okay, we have a motion and support on the floor to direct staff to draft language for this. Is there any additional discussion or direction for them? We'll call vote. Weatherby? Support. Johnson? Support. Watson? Support. Jacobit? Yes. Gauss? Yes. Taylor? Yes. And Love? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing you. So, Bridget, you understand that at the earliest, this might be able to be done by mid November, mid to end of November. Yes, I understand that. Okay, I just want to make sure we're. Um, and it will be subject to a subject to a vote still sub to a vote and a public hearing and here the commission and at the city commission. So, okay, it's not a done deal yet. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> yep. You'll get a, so you'll get another notice and Bridget, I'll call you tomorrow to uh, explain what, what comes next. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you folks. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is a presentation from Giffels Webster for a comprehensive plan. Joe, welcome in person. <laughs> Hi. I think folks all have a copy of it and have had at least a week for review. And so if you want to maybe just, do you have an agenda? I do. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll so leave I'm, you to it. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to put a, um, a presentation up uh, in the zoom. So I guess it'll come up on that screen. Yeah. Looks like that one. And um, I'll go through that and um, I've got the plan open as well. So we can look at anything we need to in there. Um, so first, let me get to the screen share. Yes. I thought you were my notes. I will go into full presentation mode here, so it takes up most of the. Yeah. There we go. And if I can get rid of this, that would be get rid of the church. I can't be <laughs> well, This way, at city hall. Hey, Mike, I don't know how you got your picture. I'm just going to put this way down here. <laughs> your house is in there. I'm pretty sure it's your house. I missed that. I'm pretty sure it was your house. All right, there we go. I didn't see it. Sorry. Just got to get this little thingy out of here so it's not floating over the presentation. Okay. I, I, I looked at it pretty thoroughly and I did not see that, unless it was in one of the, you know, the, the last appendices. What's that? Brian claims there's a picture of my house in here, and I say I did not see it. <laughs> okay. It was in the blight search. Oh, in the blight search. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Don. That's why you couldn't find it. I forgot we're being recorded. <laughs> All right. So, yes, you should have all received oh, a new. There, there it is, page 109. Golly. Yeah. yeah. For everybody. <laughs> okay, Joe, I'm sorry to have interrupted. Just no, going to make it a all right so um this is the basic uh discussion tonight we're going to talk about a little bit about organization and revisions and then we're going to talk about um, future land use policies and then uh, process for adoption of a plan um so first of all, plan organization, we did talk about this somewhat uh, last time that we met. 
So we've moved some material, particularly the economic development toolbox, which is a very large chunk of material to the appendix. Uh, natural features have also been moved to the appendix. A lot of other material has been left in the draft and um, I'll go through the rationale for some of that. Um, we have a general where we've been, where we are, where we're going kind of structure to the draft. Um, complete streets content has been kept together uh, in the draft. It's a required chapter by statute. So we felt it made sense to keep all that information together. Uh, resiliency content and attainable housing are still in the draft body. Um, redevelopment ready communities is placing more emphasis on these topics. And we actually sent the draft of this plan to your representative for redevelopment ready communities. Uh, and they uh, specifically called out that content as things that they were happy to see in there. So we felt leaving it in the body of the plan made a certain amount of sense from that perspective. Um, another thing is that the economic assessment has been bolstered with some explanatory text for forecasting, because uh, I understand that that was a little confusing uh, before. And we also eliminated the word rooftops from the draft. Um, so uh, that's some of the organizational notes uh, that I wanted to go through. Um, we have updated the existing land use map. Um, that is on page 35 of the draft. Uh, we have uh, kind of reorganized the future land use categories. A lot more is now listed under the flexible development categories. Uh, that's on pages 64 and 67 of the draft. And then we also provided a rationale for each of the thoroughfare designation changes um, in the text, because um, we had them kind of in our notes, but they weren't in the text before. And I feel like it, it helps a lot to have that rationale right in the text. And that is on page 95. Um, so obviously, if you have any specific comments or questions on any of those items, uh, I'm very happy to address them. Uh, but those are things that have been done since our last meeting. Um, Joe, at some point, mm -hmm. um, it, maybe maybe tonight or offline, um, I would love to see a, a larger map of the future land use plan. Yes. I, I, I cannot see what we're talking about on the eight and a half yep. by 11 version. Um, we and we do maybe, have an 11 by 17 version that's like a yeah. fold out, yeah. And in fact, or maybe you'd want to discuss the what the differences are between that it and the current land use plan, just the thumbnail sketch. But if mm -hmm. we could get a larger version of that, because that's that's really the gist of the whole thing, and yep. I can't see it. <laughs> sure, yep. Yeah. Didn't we at one time have a, a larger one, a fold out one? Right. Maybe the last time around. I think it's been, a while. it's been a while ago. Though, open so. up quite a bit. And yeah. actually, see, I quite agree with you. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But you were there. Uh, no, no, that's a perfectly um, uh, valid uh, interjection there. And in fact, this is the file you see up there is an 11 by 17 version of the map that would be oriented sideways in the final version of the document. Uh, some things were done to expediently get the document to you. Um, so it's a little lower res for a smaller file size, et cetera, uh, right now than it will be at the final. Um, but yeah, this is the 11 by 17 future land use map that will be used in the final version of the document. Um, it is definitely easier to see. And the residential density document <laughs> has an 11 by 17 counterpart, which you're seeing now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so yes, uh, I understand what you're saying. And yes, we've prepared for that. And, uh, that will be in the final version of the document once we're past the draft phase. As long as we're on that page. <laughs> sure. Um, could we refer to the Tecumseh corridor as the Tecumseh street corridor? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, when I read it, I That's find fine. it confusing because we also were in the process of developing a, a trail between here and Tecumseh that is referred to as the Tecumseh Corridor. Oh, sure. So, okay. With the trail system. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Tecumseh Street. Or, or something similar to identify it as a local neighborhood. Okay. Or okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's not a problem. 
makes sense. We want people to be able to understand what we're talking about without getting it confused with something else that's being mm -hmm. talked about a lot locally. So, um, all right. Uh, and then um, we've discussed your redevelopment uh, sites and we discussed the focus areas, uh, the River District, the mall and um, the Tecumseh Street Corridor um, in the past. And we have updated those uh, based on discussion with staff and, and what we talked about with you uh, in the past. Um, and then the implementation uh, matrix has also been updated. Uh, Greg was a huge help on that, giving us some sense of who the partners might be uh, locally and um, where some of the funding sources might come from. So that's all been updated as well. Um, timelines have not been added in there and that's sort of a, um, a post adoption pro project, if you will. Um, so uh, as far as policy discussion is concerned, um, uh, here is the your future land use map. And, um, you know, we could, um, obviously we could provide the uh, 11 by 17s to you tomorrow and you could just have the, the large versions, um, you know, prior to when they're actually integrated into the draft. That's something that we should do. Um, so here's your future land use map. Here are all the categories uh, which are uh, outlined in the draft. Um, and again, we've got those uh, kind of special focus areas, your Tecumseh Street Corridor, um, your river district and your mall area. And uh, you know, the mall area is a uh, particularly interesting one because it's kind of already started. There's a hotel on that north end of the site and that's, <laughs> you know, like a major change from a big field of and asphalt. Do you wonder so. why they did it like we did, like this, as, as we wonder as well, why <laughs> did they do that? <laughs> so, so you've got a little bit of activity there. Yeah. It may be necessary to direct that activity a little bit more. Um, but yes, clearly there's some, uh, some, some traction uh, on, on changes in that location. Um, you have a zoning plan uh, in your in the uh, the master plan, and uh, that's well, first of all, it's a required element by statute. But what it does is it compares uh, your land use categories on your future land use map to your existing zoning districts. It calls out places such as the River District, the Tecumseh Corridor, um, and Adrian Mall, where a new overlay or a new district would be necessary to create in order to effectuate that kind of change. Blended residential is the other one. And it also uh, you know, identifies where there might be some modifications to an existing district, such as um, the residential office district, which is similar to the in-town residential category and future land use map, but not identical. Uh, so you might be looking at some modifications to that district to make it more similar to what's in the plan. Uh, and then, of course, some of these districts are just going to be one to one comparisons. Um, um, accessory dwelling units was an uh, item that came up last time. We had a little section in there, and it, the original text for that section uh, essentially was, was uh, establishing the basis for a future discussion. Uh, what we've done this time is we've actually given some recommendations in the text, and uh, the essential recommendation is in a neighborhood where you have uh, detached garages, where, where detached garages are customary, you would look at probably having your accessory dwelling units as a detached structure, and then in units where de detached garages are not customary, you would look at having them be uh, integrated into the principal building um, because that would be more in character with the neighborhood that it's in. Um, and in, in any case, you would be looking at having owner occupancy of one of the units uh, so that you're not in a situation where you've got kind of an artificial um, uh, apartment type situation where someone own, owns the property, doesn't live there, and is just renting out both units. Um, so I, my question for you is, are you comfortable with the direction that's being given in the plan 
because obviously this is your plan ultimately. That's our recommendation, uh, but you're free to agree or disagree with it. I think, other... I, I think I expressed my opinion on it mm -hmm. maybe at one of our prior meetings and I, I'm not real warm about it, but. Uh... <laughs> The other recommendation that's, that's embodied in the text is that um, a phased rollout would be sensible. So rather than just permitting them, you can permit three a year to start. This is that Traverse City did it actually? So when Traverse City started um, permitting accessory dwelling units, they had a, I don't, I think it was five a year up there um, was their original cap. So they, they would take applications in the order in which they were received and the first five that met the standards were the five that got the approval and were allowed to move forward. And they don't have a cap anymore because it was going well and they just removed the cap. But um, they had that in place for a few years to keep the pace of change slow. And there was a lot of demand there. So they hit the five unit cap pretty quickly. Um, each year, but um, you know, you may find that you set a three three unit cap, and in December you get your third um, application, or you only have two by November, uh, or you could find that you kind of go through them very quickly, and you would adjust on the basis of how many applications are coming in and whether or not it's going well in the neighborhoods. If if what's being built is something that you're happy with, and of course before you ever permitted them, you would develop standards for, for the units themselves. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's still a lot of discussion that would happen at the planning commission level. And ultimately that would be forwarded on to your city commission. Um, but um, that's the approach we're calling for is think about the character of the neighborhood. If you have, if you have detached accessory buildings as a matter of course in the neighborhood, it would make sense for these to follow that route and be detached. And then if you have no detached major accessory structures, I'm not really counting sheds or anything, I'm talking about garages primarily, um, you would look at integrating them into the primary structure if you were interested in doing that in those neighborhoods. Um, and then a phased approach to make sure that your regulations are working. And if they're working and, and you're happy with the results that you're getting, you might remove the phased approach. Oh, I, any other comments on that or? I mean, on that point, I would just point out for the commission that, yeah, you know, we talk about the need for additional housing in the city. This is the most uh, achievable way to to uh, accomplish that is to allow accessory units because the problem we run into with the construction of new housing is that the cost to construct it is more than the sale price when you're done. Yeah. And mm -hmm. If you can add to an existing mm -hmm. property, that's not the case. And my hesitation is our, our inability to control rental housing and blight as it is. And I suspect that we have some of these already that we don't even know about. And we, the ZBA has case, it just has a case in the last month for someone saying, well, gee, I, I have to be able to park my car in the front lawn because my garage is full of other stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah. I mean, obviously every use has an off street parking requirement associated yeah. with it. And, and if yeah. you add additional units, you double your off street parking requirements. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that the master plan is not self executing, right? right. right? This Absolutely. is a policy. Exactly. Yeah. When you get around to creating amendments to the zoning ordinance to effectuate it, that's when you get down to the details of how that would be accomplished. Which is why I haven't made a thing to do about that. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a suggestion. You know? yep. What else, Joe? Okay. And then the other focus topics, we've kind of addressed these already, but I just wanted to kind of list out here are the things that we focused on and broke out as separate issues. 
uh, in your land use plan, which, uh, you know, a transition toward more toward form based zoning, uh, particularly in those flexible uh, land use categories. Um, potential use of overlays to accomplish some of these special planning area goals. Um, you know, you, you do use the PUD uh, that you have in your ordinance uh, here, and that is another way to, um, to preserve some flexibility going forward of development. And it gives you a lot of control as well, because a PUD is essentially a negotiation between uh, the city and the applicant. So uh, that's, a, that's a good tool to have in your, in your toolbox. Uh, we have addressed vacation rentals uh, and how they're handled now. Um, they don't seem to be a particularly pressing issue. Uh, we provided a little policy guidance on implementing the uh, complete neighborhood concept. Uh, we've addressed uh, electric vehicles uh, and evolving use of curb space um, briefly because curb space is something that people don't think about too often. Usually we just think, oh, that's either a fire lane or it's where you park. But with the advent of the Ubers and Lyfts of the world, uh, more spaces for people to be picked up uh, might actually make some sense in the future. And then, you know, you've got a lot of carry out activity that I think has increased a lot over the last year and a half at restaurants. So more um, extremely short term curb spaces um, are, is another thing that you might be considering. Um, and then uh, in the implementation chapter, we have a small focus uh, area on pink zoning, which is referred to in a couple of the uh, future land use categories and a few places in the implementation mat matrix. And pink zoning, as we discussed uh, in the past, is essentially uh, an, an area you identify where you're looking to spur redevelopment uh, activity and you find ways to um, lower bureaucratic barriers to that redevelopment activity in those particular areas. Um, so there's a little focus breakout on, on what pink zoning is and then how it might be applied in the city. I thought that was placed a little awkwardly in that we're using implementation strategies throughout and then all of a sudden you come up mm -hmm. on pink zoning there mm -hmm. and it looks as though it's another, uh, I didn't know where it fit in my mind and thinking in that category. So um, I'm not sure that that's a good, or is it or is it this part that's misplaced maybe uh page 142 is what we're looking at and page 143 and and we're talking about implementation strategies but then page 142 is labeled zoning plan uh or maybe i'm Right. The, zoning, the zoning plan is part of your implementation strategy right. because it talks about how you might um, change your, your zoning map okay. uh, after the plan is adopted. Okay. And then we felt we put pink zoning where it is because it's a zoning tool that could be used in tandem with, your, uh, with any rezonings that you might do uh, in the future. That's kind of the logic behind where it is, is that it's also a zoning tool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's what Mike was saying. Okay. It's just maybe, it, yeah, it, it, it's a trivial point, but just maybe switch page 143 with 142. For sure. Flip one, one, two, and one. I just want to bring it backwards. So oh, okay. <laughs> All the better. Yeah. I had about to specifically to read it. Don's already done it. Punch the All right. and then we Okay, that's very simple to do. Um, and then, you know, the implementation table, as I was saying, I just wanted to give you kind of a little snapshot of it. And on page 162, there's a key to the funding sources and the supporting partners and what all the little numbers and abbreviations in the table mean. Mm -hmm. um, so that keeps the table nice and concise because you're not writing it out every time. Um, what, what, what page is that? No. Uh, it starts on page 130, okay. sorry, 137. Hang on. 
Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So you've got a uh... wait, still implementation table. That's not what we're looking at there, though, is it? Three sites, right? Oh, sorry, did I? 137. Oh, I'm sorry, I said the wrong page number. 132. 132. 132. Okay. Yeah. Th that's where the potential funding sources are listed. Oh, we got 162. I, I, I threw myself off by, by putting a six instead of a three in the presentation. Um, so 133 is the first one of those tables where it starts with his goal yes. one. Mm -hmm. And um, yep. that goes on for you know several pages of, of specific implementation items. Okay. Um, and then uh, I just wanted to outline the steps that um, that come after the draft is is deemed complete by the planning commission. So uh, we discussed last time whether a 42 day or 32 day review period was more appropriate. We felt our 63 and four, I'm sorry, I'm tired. 63 or 42 day uh, review period was more appropriate. And we felt uh, that the 63 day review period was more appropriate because we did the kind of a large update. Uh, whereas the 42 day period um, is, generally felt to be uh, appropriate for when you do a small update, like you address a certain small area of the city or you change the boundaries of your water and sewer district or something like that. Um, so 63 day review period and the planning commission requests that um, the city commission release the plan for the 63 day review period. The plan is then transmitted to all the agencies and neighboring communities uh, that were originally notified of the intent to plan at the very beginning of this process. Uh, after the 63 day comment period, you review the comments if you receive any and you set a public hearing on the plan. The public hearing occurs here at the planning commission. You hold the public hearing and then you adopt the plan. The legislative body, uh, has the legislative body, uh, is there, are they going to exercise their option to adopt the plan? I, I don't think we've gotten direction from them on that yet. Okay. All yeah. right, when we refer it up the, to them, they can opine on that, I think. We, we would hope that they would. Yes, that's, that's the preferred from our perspective. They, they, uh, they should have ownership of it. Exactly, it indicates yeah. buy-in, yeah. so that's, that's ideal in my opinion, but it is optional under state law. And then once that's occurred, we take all the resolutions of adoption and everything, the notices of everything, and we incorporate that into the plan appendix and the final plan is then provided with your 11 by 17 fold out pages and everything. Um, so th those are the steps that are remaining uh, after the draft is, is final. Um, and then for adopting the comprehensive plan at that public hearing, a two thirds majority of the full planning commission is required to adopt a master plan. So that's, uh, that's for the next meeting, but um, that's the, the way it's done. Um, so with that, um, I would entertain any other questions or comments that you might have. Stop my share for the moment. And otherwise, there are a couple of small adjustments to make here, but um, you know we can make those very easily tomorrow and turn it back around to the city staff. I think Gordon went out to put the top up on his car. I hope not. It's up. It's up. Okay. It's, it's up. Um, but it's boring. Joe, um, one thing I've, I've mentioned this before on page 48. Page 48. The second sentence at the top of the, the second sentence on that page is an incomplete sentence. It doesn't have an object. Forty-eight, page forty-eight. Local development plan. Uh, you're referring to the first paragraph. The first in the very, very first paragraph, the second sentence. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Is is, is missing something. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Let me let me work that in the draft. Yeah. Okay. I I know what it's missing actually. Okay. And there is a spot where you refer to Jackson Community College at uh, the Votex Center. Mm -hmm. It's now Jackson College at the Tech Center. At Votex. Jackson, Jackson College at the Tech Center. You said. Just tech center. There's no Votex anymore. There's no Votex. And there's no community. No, <laughs> no, that's right. No longer any community colleges at all. Let me see. Okay, that's easy. I do have a question about something. When you're talking about housing, Joe, you talk about um, there, are, and I'm sorry, I don't know, two or three places where you talk about this plan does not advocate um, to create. Uh, to change, you know, existing housing into multi-family housing, mm -hmm. and I don't see other places within the plan where you said where you refer to something that the plan does not do, and I wondered why that emphasis on this plan does not advocate for. I wish I had made a note of where those are, but um, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I know. I'm thinking of this. I'm so, looking for the sentence. I'm, in other words, taking a large single family home and turning it into multiple. Right. right. Yeah. There's, there are the two one. or three places, I think, within the document that, that talks about that. And right. I, uh, and it's, it's, I, I don't know, my concern, I, it's not a concern. It's just a, a little quinchy thing for me. <laughs> um, that the, the plan, you don't talk about other things that you do not advocate in the plan. And I, I think maybe you're just being cautionary in those cases, but but mm -hmm. in a way, you know, we're we're talking about uh, maybe we don't want to be cautious because we're talking mm -hmm. about you know addressing the missing middle and about uh, affordable housing and all of those things. And I I don't know that just I suspect that that struck me a bit. <laughs> I suspect that it crept in there because we we discussed that in our current plan. Right. Yeah. Our current plan specifically says. We do not want large single family homes converted to apartments. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. For, for, but I don't think so, you want to say that anymore. For anyone looking no. for it, it's on page 67 <laughs> in, the in, in the in town residential and blended residential. Um, and if that's something that, that a plurality of the planning commission does not want, then obviously that's something that should come out of there. I like the idea that it's in there. But I, I, I but, don't, but it, I don't it, it's think the format that's that wrong. Well, yeah. I also I also think that why are we choosing this one issue that we're saying we're okay. we're not advocating yeah. for that when I think in fact we're going to have to address housing and mm -hmm. we're going to have to look at all things, all, all kinds of housing. And maybe it's okay if we say, oh my, we might have said that in our master plan, but you know we we thought about it later on and you know whatever, but you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what's the general feeling of the planning commission on that one? I, 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 Nancy's right. Even though I am opposed to us converting large homes to multifamily, uh, we sh probably should not say the plan does not advocate. Okay. Those. We will well, remove. Just be silent. Yeah, silent. yeah, exactly. We can. Be <laughs> yeah, if you're silent on it, then it can be a, a discussion in the yeah. future. Yeah. Also, it does give us the option to go back to the Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. But we do know that one of the issues we have in this town is that we have so many large homes that have been converted into multifamily properties that have turned into disrepair and oftentimes are blight. Yep. And that's the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. That might be the reality, but as I've said we many a time before, yeah, we cannot true. plan based on what we do not do well. I don't think we can plan based on the fact that we are inept at. Uh, well, I, I would like to quote you to future planning commissions on that, actually. <laughs> um, that was very nicely said. <laughs> you know, as long as we're on page 67, mm -hmm. the bottom of the left hand column, mm -hmm. three lines up from the bottom. Sure. Uh, Uses uses that are compatible with surrounding residential uses. Maybe that should be along the corridor. Yeah, along. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Which 
Okay. For the pronunciation. Jackson College Tech Center, foot 42 and 43. Okay, so we're moving those two sentences uh, to come see street corridor. In, in all ref in all references, yeah, there's a number of references to the yeah. Dumpsy corridors. So yeah, exactly. Search and replace there or something. Yep. So uh, flip page 142 and 143. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Community College is now Jackson College at the Tech Center. And then that first paragraph on page 48 yes. is what I have as my notes. Jackson Community College? It, no, that, it's, it's not that anymore. College. It's not that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, so is our anticipation then that with those corrections, we would look to approve this? A request that council or the city commission- to review it. Uh, uh, would you send me the slide? Would you send me the, 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 the process on it? Yes, um, definitely. I'll send it to you. See it there. See it there. Recognizing that that step is that they, you're asking them for permission to distribute it to the other right. agencies that get a further right. review for 63 days. The only thing I wanted to see in detail yet would be the the future land use plan mm -hmm. map because I still haven't can't see it can't see it so <laughs> and that's like the key component so so. Take another look in November and then well, have that as a or October, or October excuse me. Yes. And have that as a consideration. <laughs> yes. Yeah. At that time. Joe, is that okay? Yeah, uh, we can get that turned around by the end of the week. Oh, okay. And um we'll get it to, to Greg and Jeremiah and they can distribute it to you. Okay. So you've got it. Great. Joe, on page 65, you do have a little typo. Under general commercial, it's the last sentence. I'm sure you'll catch it, but. Well, what's a document with no some type? <laughs> well, especially when this big. What can we, what can we, you know, ask English teachers? Oh, to do just, we just, well, district. Yeah. Okay. It's got an extra period. Well, the period, the period's three, three spots to the left. Yeah. Just located here. Yeah. <laughs> you have to see a chiropractor for that. Yeah, we'll give it another once Those over. Are, I think you will. <laughs> so, so the reality of all this process, as I was going through this for the second time or so, is that we're finally going to become deeply involved in planning commission work rather than simply responding to requests from our citizens. Good point. And, Good point. and you know, I can see the sweat on our brows what an opportunity to take these section by section. Well, not necessarily every section, mm -hmm. but some of the, you know, the key ones we've been talking about. I mean, the river district and yep. housing issues and some of these really, really a chance to think out of the box we've been talking about doing it. This really lets that's us, gives us a very good point. Well, oh, thank you very much. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. It is. I, I think because I highlighted everything that was the lead body was the planning commission. <laughs> yes, of course. A lot yeah. of and, there, and there are too many of those yeah. shows. Could you change, could you change that? And then I highlighted the thing that said one year. And I, whoa, we better get to work, guys. But it really does lay out, a, I mean, it lays out a, a, a game plan for us. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. You're right. Good. All right. Are we good then with, uh, you've got what you need? I'm good, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much. I appreciate your time and your attention and your feedback and um yeah so we're getting we'll close you will get that turned around okay thank you sir mm -hmm. thank you for yep. this copy this was no this problem. was much 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 better yeah yeah and i looked at the fact that mike's house is in there <laughs> and i didn't even realize that i looked at you know, the agent didn't even register it did not yeah. yes i did yes i did yes, I did. yes. Do, at, at, at one point when i was on the brownfield redevelopment authority and it, uh, a consulting firm that we had made a presentation on several sites around the city 
that they thought. And they went out with David Munson and looked at these sites. Right? Uh -huh. And so the first slide was you know, the overall slide. The second slide was this. It was the mayor's house. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the he was on the pretty was all planned that way. Oh, said, oh. my god, that's my house. <laughs> uh, uh. Little yes. Is there any other business to come before the planning commission this evening? Anybody in the audience, virtually or really, that wishes to address us? Good evening, Mrs. Bonnet. Hey, good evening. Hi. Uh, I I just had asked to get a copy of the plan and I didn't get that and so I hope that I can still be included and uh, I provided my email and offered to come drive and pick up the paper copy so hopefully that would be made available to me. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Okay, any it other currently is on the website Lynn. It is on the website, you say? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Lynn, did you hear that? Okay, very good. That's true. Any other comments? If hearing none, then is there a motion to adjourn? All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.